members of the presidium, excellencies, respected delegates from home and abroad, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor for me for the Pakistan Academy of Letters and the Government of Pakistan to welcome you to this August gathering of writers, the galaxy of scholars and intellectuals all over the world, the discerning minds for this international conference on Sufism and peace, which is the main theme with sub-themes like art, literature and peace, the challenges of globalization and the challenges of extremism and the culture of tolerance and so many other problems facing our world these days. This one in 1995, then too, that time I was also, I was the chairman of Pakistan Academy of Letters when the Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto inaugurated the International Conference on Democracy and Culture in this hall. That conference was attended by 400 delegates from all over the world, from 110 countries, which is unprecedented in any country of the world, including UNESCO, United Nations, or all other international organizations that exist and that has something to do with the promotion of literature, promotion of culture, and promotion of tolerance. In that conference, our legendary leader, Benedict Bhutto, has announced that such conferences will be held frequently but unfortunately our government was dismissed and we had to go back. Now when I took over last year again in the present capacity it was my dream, my passion to fulfill the promise of Benazir Bhutto. So this conference today is fulfilling the promise of our great leader, Benazir Bhutto. We came out with a declaration which will circulate it to you. In that conference we published very important documents like the selection of the mystic poets of Pakistan, 14 poets, translated into six languages of United Nations and two other languages, Urdu and Persian. We translated the resistance literature written by the brave writers who fought against the militarism and the dictatorship and the fascism of General Ziaul Haq the protest and the dissent literature, we published that in eight languages of the world. We also published the women writings from Pakistan. We published all these books in different languages. So when you go to any country of the world, Moscow or Madrid or China or France or South of America, in Arab countries, in Persia, you will find those books in their respective languages. We have reprinted and updated all those books now for this conference, for our 
foreign delegates will be distributed to you. They will be placed in your rooms, along with some other books like the history of peace, like the first ever cultural policy, which we uh, announced on August 31, 1995, and a few other documents. We also translated into Urdu and poetry and uh, the short story selected of 110 countries into Urdu. We are also going to give you the summarized and the abridged version of that book. This is something that we are going to gift you. I call this conference or I visualize this conference this is a defining moment not only in the history of Pakistan in the history of all de democratic countries because we are here today the assembly of writers to me it's like as I said this is the United Nations of the writers because we want the writers should play a paramount role in the economic, in the political, and in the cultural decision making of the countries. And they should not mar marginalize themselves, and they should not stay on the periphery and leave the things of decision making to others. Because in the history, the writers have always played uh, their role model. Therefore, during the deliberation of these writers, our writers, and the interaction, and the arguments, and the papers, what they read, we are going to learn a lot. You are to learn a lot how things are going on, how the Sufi message can combat the forces, dark forces of extremism, the dark forces of fundamentalism, the dark forces of religious bigotry and obscurantism, which is not only is rampant and blatant in Pakistan, in many other countries in our neighbor countries and so many other countries. We have to think about these things. We have to take a very serious note. This is not only that we come and say and go back. We have to take some decisions. We should be durable. We should be everlasting. We should be enduring. And we should affect the thinking process of the people that matter. I think this is my personal view and I do not hesitate to advocate my views and I do not by habit mince words. To me, the writer or the intellectual or the artist who have conscience they have to, they are destined to fight against the establishment and the status quo which is against the interest of the people. They have to resist, they have to say no, they have to question, they have to rebel, and if need be, the, they have to come out practically to fight in against the forces of oppression, suppression, fanaticism, and other anti-people forces in the dehumanized and in the brutalized societies because as 
I said in one of my poems, one line, that somebody has to die, somebody has to die so that other people live. So, sacrifice, one has to sacrifice. Either it was Socrates drinking the cup of Femlech or it was Galileo or it was Sarmad or it was Patofi of Hungary or so many other things. Even a very romantic poet like Byron he fought in Greece. The writers like Andrew, Andre Melro, the French writer, the writer of Blood Wedding, Lorca, and Chilean Nobel laureate Pablo Neruda, Ernest Hemingway, all fought in the Spanish Civil War against the forces of fascism. Like even Pablo Neruda and Picasso, his famous po uh, painting Garnica, which shows the overall destruction and devastation of Garnica at the hands of undemocratic forces. So, the combine of artists, scholars, writers, even musicians, it is important and that's why you call it, this is a defining moment. Either we withdraw or we fight with a unilateral forces for the democratic pluralism, for the culture of tolerance, for the brotherhood of man, for the love and for lofty values which have emerged in the sea of consumerism, commercialism, expansionism, militarism and all such nefarious designs of different powers, superpowers, even mini powers who have their such predilections and their uh, preferences. So, my dear friends, my dear colleagues, we have given you this opportunity, we have given you this form under very, very difficult circumstances. You know, our country is undergoing a very dangerous situation. And in this situation, it was something to hold such a big conference. You cannot know how the arrangements have been made, how my colleagues, my academy, Myself been working 18 hours a day for the last three months, but we have all the blessing from the President of Pakistan, from the Prime Minister of Pakistan, from the people of Pakistan, from the writers of Pakistan, and so we have assembled successfully this galaxy, this cream of writers, and scholars and intellectuals from all over the world. And I end my speech with thanks one more and with the quote of again that writer who is my favorite writer, favorite poet, Pablo Neruda of Chile, who said in his autobiography that I was a poet of romance but 
when blood oozed from the guitars of Spain, I traveled, migrated from the south of romanticism to the north of resistance. So we have to migrate. We have to shun our complacency. We have to shun our compromises. And we have to shun that outdated theory, literature for literature's sake. Literature for literature's sake is a simple nonsense. Literature is only for life, for commitment, for the welfare of the millions of downtrodden and as Franz Fan Fanon Franz said, for the welfare of the downtrodden. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and have a very nice, fruitful three days of discussion, interaction, deliberation, and mutual love. We have tried our best to give you hospitality, whatever was in our uh, power. We hope you will be happy here in this one of the most modern and one of the most beautiful city of Pakistan, that is Islamabad. Thank you very much once more.